Brendan from the Topeka Zoo and Conservation Center and welcome to the 10 o'clock virtual education program. Like we've been doing over the last couple of weeks, want to give a shout out to another local business, Pinkadilly in the Noto Arts District. Now it's May 4th and like so many of us realize, the community is starting to reopen. So beginning today, Pinkadilly is opening back up. Uh, please, if you can, if you feel safe to, please support local small businesses. It's been a really, really rough time for them. And on this reopening, as people are starting to uh, get back out, remember those social distancing tips, wear a mask. A mask is a great way to show the people around you that you care about them and support local. Remember, Topeka Strong, we're in this together. And without further ado, Rachel with our education program. Thank you so much, Brendan. And as always, thank you to our sponsors, Topeka Collegiate and the Kokari Foundation. We appreciate your generosity. And happy Monday, happy Star Wars Day. May the fourth be with all of you. Um, today, we are talking about kindergarten curriculum relating to ways humans can help protect the environment, how we can help protect nature. This is one of my favorite topics. I love talking about solutions that we can do to help the plants and animals around the world. And today, we are gonna talk about a really big, really easy way that from home, you can help protect animals. Today, we are going to talk about recycling and pollution. Now, these are two kind of big words. So let's talk about what each one of these things means. So pollution is a word that we use when items in an area are dirty and are outside and can harm the plants or animals. So let's say you have a piece of trash, like this styrofoam cup. Well, usually when you're done with trash, you take it and you put it in a trash can. And when you put it in a trash can, it goes to the landfill. However, what pollution is, is when items do not get into the trash can like they're supposed to. As opposed to going into the trash can, maybe the styrofoam cup gets thrown outside and it ends up on our lawns or in our rivers. As soon as it is outside in a place where it's not supposed to be, and it's dirty and it harms the plants and animals, that is when it becomes pollution. So it's trash items that aren't in the trash can. They're out in the world and a plant or animal could get stuck on it, they could eat it, and that is harmful to them. So pollution is stuff that is bad. We don't want that. Recycling is a way that we can stop pollution because we stop making the trash in the first place. So recycling is when we make new items out of some of our trash. So this plastic bottle, as opposed to throwing it in the trash, if we throw it in a recycling bin, this actually goes to a recycling facility where they can break this down and make new things out of it. And that is good because one, it doesn't go sit in a landfill, and two, it doesn't hurt the plants and animals. So real quick, before we talk about what is recyclable, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about what happens to plants and animals when trash becomes pollution. So what I have here, this is the picture of a spot in the ocean that has lots and lots of pollution, lots of trash floating around. Do you guys think this is a safe place for animals and plants to live? If you said no, you are right. This is not a safe place to be. Many animals like sea turtles, they actually get stuck in our trash when it makes it to the ocean. To us, this is a plastic bag. But when this plastic bag is in the water and it floats like this, to a sea turtle, it actually looks like a jellyfish and they try and eat it. And a sea turtle that eats a plastic bag is gonna get really sick. It might even pass away. So we wanna make sure that our trash doesn't end up in the ocean because it can harm animals like turtles. Now, I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, Rachel, we live in Kansas. It's in the middle of the United States. Why do we have to worry about our trash ending up in the ocean? Well, you guys, Kansas, you can consider it a state that our trash can harm the animals because when a piece of trash 
Let's say this styrofoam cup gets thrown outside. When this cup, when it rains, when it goes outside, it gets into the drains, the storm drains that are along our streets. And those drains go directly into our rivers, the Kansas River, which by the way, is where we get our drinking water, okay? Now the Kansas River, here in Kansas, we're right here, it actually flows into the Missouri River. And the Missouri River flows into the Mississippi River. And the Mississippi River goes all the way out into the Gulf of Mexico. So it is very possible for our trash here in Kansas to go to our rivers, which then hooks up to all the bigger rivers and flows into the ocean. So we here in Kansas, our trash could harm a sea turtle down in the Gulf of Mexico, in the ocean. So we need to make sure that our trash ends up in the trash can and our recycling ends up in the recycling bin. So what I wanna do is I wanna practice what is and is not recyclable, which means the things we can put in our recycling bin that can be made new. Because if we can recycle items, we wanna do that because we can use them over and over. Now the first thing I wanna say before we practice what is and isn't recyclable is things have to be washed out. Before you put anything in a recycling bin, it has to be clean. It cannot have any food or dirt in it or they will not take it. So if I put it in the recycling column, please make sure it is clean. Okay, so let's practice. The first thing that I have is paper. Paper can include any paper product, like a piece of paper, newspaper, a magazine, cardboard. As long as they are clean, you can put paper in the recycling bin. So that is a recyclable item. So paper is the first thing that we can put in our recycling bin. Now, the next thing, let's do another one. Plastic bags. So plastic bags, whether they're the ones you get at the store or chip bags like these, these are not recyclable. They cannot reuse these. So any sort of plastic bags like this needs to go to our trash. It goes to the landfill. So we've got our recycling and we've got our trash. So plastic bags, unfortunately, please put them in the trash. They do not go in recycling. Let's look at another one. Ooh, plastic bottles. So any plastic bottle, like a Gatorade bottle, or a water bottle, a pop bottle, all of these are recyclable. So all you need to do is rinse them out and drop them in your recycling bin. Any plastic bottles, those are good. We want to make sure they get recycled. Now oftentimes you do have to take off the tops, as you can see. If it's a top that's really small, like a water bottle, do take that off and throw the top in the trash. But for the bigger ones like Gatorade, you can leave those on. All right, let's look at something else. Ooh, food waste. So if you eat a banana or an orange, no food can go in recycling. All of your food scraps must go in the trash. And then you can wash off any other container that they came in, and if it's plastic, you can put it in here. But food itself is not recyclable. Please never put any food in the recycling. It must go in the trash. Ooh, here's one that a lot of kids love, juice pouches. So juice pouches like our Capri Sun or maybe you've gotten some yogurt, these are not recyclable. So please put our juice pouches in the trash. You cannot recycle these. This is a trash item. Ooh, plastic tubs. So any thick plastic like a yogurt container, or a milk jug, or um, this, like a, like a shampoo bottle, or a food container. If it's thick plastic, it is recyclable. So you wanna make sure to rinse it out and put it in our recycling. Alrighty, let's look at another. Ooh, 
aluminum cans, like pop cans. If you guys drink a lot of pop, aluminum, as well as aluminum foil, as long as it's clean, aluminum is recyclable. This is a big one. So make sure after you drink your pop to put it in the recycling. Ooh, here's a big one. Milk cartons, okay? If you guys get these at your lunch, at school, or if you get big milk waxy cartons or juice cartons, these waxy ones are not recyclable. So if it's waxy like this, you have to put it in the trash, okay? So our milk cartons like this, like you get at school, do not recycle those. Put those in the trash. All right, we have two more. Tin cans, this is a good one. So if you guys are eating your vegetables or some fruits or soups come in these tin cans like this one, these are recyclable. Simply rinse them out and put them in your recycling bin. Now this final one is very important, styrofoam. Whether you get it as a cup or a to-go container, plates, please never use styrofoam if you can avoid it. This is not recyclable. It goes in the trash and it does not ever break down. I actually refuse styrofoam. I always bring my own containers when I go to restaurants and I never get any cups that are styrofoam. I avoid them because these go in the trash. So, if you are in kindergarten, what I have for you guys is a worksheet. And it's linked in the comments here. And I want you guys to practice. This worksheet shows several different items and I want you to color in the ones that can be recycled. If it goes in the trash, leave it blank. But if it goes in the recycling, color it in and take a photo. I've also included in the comments, um, the Shawnee County guide for what can be recycled. So if you have any questions, if you live in Topeka or Shawnee County, um, there is the first page is what can go in the recycling bin, and the second page is what cannot go in the recycling bin. So this is the guide to look at. You can always ask the zoo as well. We'd be happy to help you, but this is a really easy way to know what can go in recycling and cannot. But please make sure it is always clean. Now friends, we have a live animal for you to meet. This is an animal that lives here in Kansas. She might even be found in the river. So this is an animal that lives where our pollution goes, okay? So she's one that gets affected if our trash ends up in the river. Now her name is Mona Lisa, and she is one of our turtles. So this here is a painted turtle. And she gets her name Mona Lisa because painted turtles, they've got this beautiful orange and red coloring on the bottom of their shell. And Mona Lisa is the name of a famous painting. But she is a full grown turtle that we have in our ponds, our rivers, our lakes here in Kansas. In fact, painted turtles can be found all over the United States. But unfortunately, sometimes painted turtles, they get stuck on our trash. They might get stuck in a plastic bag. They get stuck on um, the plastic rings that come with your pop. They'll sometimes eat straws. And so these guys aren't doing very well, especially when they live in waters that are full of pollution. They're full of trash. So one of the things you guys are doing at home when you recycle is you are making sure that the trash doesn't get into the rivers and you are helping animals like Mona Lisa. She did not come in because of trash, but many other animals, including turtles and frogs and animals that live in the water, trash is a really big problem for them. So one way we can help protect them is to simply make sure that we recycle. And all you need to do is get a separate bin and set it out at the curb, just like you do with your trash. And they will take it away to the recycling facility. 
Now, Mona Lisa here, she came in several years ago because she had an injured shell that has since healed, but now we use her for education classes. She is at least 10 years old, and painted turtles can live 20 to 30 years in the wild. They can live even longer in human care. Now she is a full grown turtle, so they don't get very big um, and they rely on this shell as a way to protect them. You'll notice it's this beautiful dark color on top, so she blends in with the water so that predators do not see her. So do we have any questions at home about our painted turtle or about recycling? Maggie says that we can put our food waste in a compost bin. Oh, Maggie, you are so right. That is exactly it. So you can put food waste as long as it's not meat. So any organic food materials like eggshells or fruits or vegetables, you can compost that. And then you can use that soil to plant a new garden. I have a huge compost bin at my house for all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and you can get some very strong plants from compost. You can. Compost is very good, adding more nutrients, good, uh, good things back into the soil for plants to grow. Um, how did her shell get damaged? We're not exactly sure. So sometimes when they come in through the rehab unit, we don't always know the full story. Sometimes people just find them that way and then we take care of them. But thankfully for her, her shell did heal, um, but it took long enough that we are now using her as an education animal um, just to make sure she stays safe and knows how to turtle. Um. Eli says, no more Sonic drinks. <laughs> so a lot of our um, big fast food restaurants do use styrofoam. So that's one of the ways we want to help you know, the environment is to not use styrofoam. So if you know a restaurant does, maybe send them a letter um, asking them to please switch their drinks because I will not go anywhere that I know gives styrofoam. And even right now when we're having to order restaurants and carry out, I ask them specifically to please not put it in styrofoam. I ask them to wrap it in foil or cardboard or plastic. So we want to take the extra step, the extra initiative sometimes to not use styrofoam. I always bring my own Tupperware into restaurants. Sometimes I get crazy looks, but I've had several people actually compliment me and say, that's a smart idea. I'm going to do that as well. Uh, Eli wants to know what her favorite food is. Fish. Um, so they are an omnivore. They eat both plants and meat, but here at the Topeka Zoo, she gets both, but fish are her favorite things. She likes lettuce as well, but her fish days are her favorite. Uh, and what is her enrichment? Um, so for Mona Lisa, it's going to be mostly moving the rocks around in her enclosure as well as moving around the lily pads, her heat lamp. It's going to be structural in nature. Every once in a while, they might give her a differing food item as well, like a mouse, um, just to kind of mix it up. But for the reptiles, it's usually moving around their exhibit to allow them to move their bodies and climb on things differently. Uh, where can we find her at the zoo? Great question. So she now has a full pond to herself. So she lives in this pond at the back of the room right behind me. This is the Gary Clark Education Room. Prior uh, to the past few weeks, she was in there with our alligator, but Norbert the alligator has gotten too big. So he has moved to his own pond in the back of the rainforest, and Mona Lisa has this pond as a suite to herself. So you can find her in our Gary Clark Education Room. Uh, does she usually share uh, space with other animals? When we have a young alligator, yes, that is safe for her. Norbert had gotten too big that we wanted to make sure that he wasn't trying to hurt her. So when the alligators are younger, yeah, we'll put them in there together. But as soon as they get too big, we separate them just for safety reasons. Uh, Maggie wants to know, can she be aggressive? Great question, Maggie. So she, if she's feeling threatened, they might try and bite, but they don't have teeth like we do. They have a beak. Now, Mona Lisa has been with us, you know, for the last 10 years, so she knows we're not trying to hurt her. But in the wild, if a predator tries to attack her, one, she'll tuck into her shell, um, but two, she'll also use her claws and her beak as a way to claw out and bite at a predator. Daniel says hello. Hi, Daniel. Um, do I have any more okay. Questions? 
Well, if that is the end of our class today, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please practice recycling at home. It is one of the easiest ways that we can help protect our animals. And if you have any questions on what is and isn't recyclable, call the zoo, ask for Rachel. I'd be happy to tell you. We will be back tomorrow morning for a 10 o'clock first grade session, and we're going to meet a big orange striped animal. So come back tomorrow at 10 a.m., and we'll see you guys then.